Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. If it's your first time here, hello, my name's Vanessa Lee. Oh my gosh, it's a beautiful day and it feels like spring. Finally, I have no heating on. I did have the windows open just now, but I have closed them. My neighbors are playing music, so I definitely feel that spring summer vibe is on its way. I love this time of the year. So I thought this would be the perfect time to start doing a little bit of propagating. I do have several plants around my home, but today I just wanna tackle one plant in particular. So it's my Philodendron Splendid, which is behind me, just there. And I have another one here. This is the top cutting. Look. Oh, she's looking so amazing. I actually need to put some more sphagnum moss in the pole. And yeah, so it's this one actually that I want to chop up. Let me just drag her forward so that you can see her in all her magnificent splendor. Perfectly named plant, perfect. Um, yeah, so I've actually got two plants in this pot. I've got one here and one here. So I'm actually gonna chop this one up. Oh, I'm gonna cut both of them up, to be honest. Um, and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do next. But yeah, so I think the best thing to do is to tip the camera down and yeah, just get chopping. Okay, I'm ready for all my things, my bits and bobs, I'm gonna get the mat out. So this is gonna be a messy job because we are gonna be dealing with a pole of sphagnum moss. And yeah, I don't actually know what is the best way of going about this. Actually, you know what, hang on, hang on. Let's just go up a little bit first because I think what I wanna do is cut it while it's on the pole first. I think that would be the smartest move. Yeah, let's get the straps off. One. Oh yeah, I'm really excited to do this actually because not only will it alleviate a little bit of space in this room, I get to donate a bit of this plant because it is one of my favorites. Um, I do have a friend, um, that's obsessed with plants just as much as I am. And I know that she's been looking for a splendid and I don't know if she knows that I have one because I've been keeping it a secret from her because I knew that I wanted to grow like a really nice size for her. So I don't know, I don't know. She's not the kind of girl that likes watching, like she doesn't use social media at all. And um, yeah. That's, that's her. So she might have seen it, I don't know. Maybe she's just playing dumb. <laughs> but yeah, so let's get chopping. Well, I don't know where to start actually. And did I clean my sugar tears? I don't think I did. So I found this water bottle. I've got um, like a mixture of surgical spirits, some water and a little bit of dish soap. Blah. A little bit of this dish soap. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just give this a quick clean. So yeah, what the idea is that I'm probably going to save, um, one half of the plant, but I don't need all of this stem that's at the bottom here. And where is it rooted? Okay, so it's rooted there. So I think I'm gonna cut it. Oh, I don't know, yeah. I'm gonna cut it here, boom. And on this side, I'm just gonna yeah, I want to keep this long piece here and then I've just got this one section on this side. So as long as there's 
an aerial, not an aerial route, what am I saying? As long as there is a growth point, which you can pretty much see, hopefully you can see that if you zoom away, you. So there's a growth point there, so I'll cut this one. I'll probably cut it about here. I can't see a growth point for this leaf, but that's not a problem. I think I'm just gonna cut it about, yeah, I don't, oh no, I can feel one here. Okay, brilliant, so I'm gonna cut it a bit lower. Cut it there. Oh, there. Oh no, this one has no roots. Actually, I should come back a bit because now you can't see what's going on. So I've got one off. And then there is, let's see here. Yeah, so then I'm gonna, there's a growth point here. He's in the way now, oh my gosh. Yeah, there's a growth point there. So, oh, actually, yeah, that's the last cut. That's the last one. Okay, brilliant, we're done. So now I'm gonna tip the camera down. I do have one here, one leaf without any roots. So, but I mean, I think I can get these roots to activate. I'll put some great white on that and I'll put that in a pot of sphagnum moss. But for now, I'll just put that over there. Okay, now I'm ready to dismantle. Oh my gosh, am I ready for this? Let me just cut this one as well. Okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> now I'm ready to dismantle the pole. There are loads of roots in the back of this pole, as you can see. So yeah. Gonna have to dig all of those out of the tiny little holes on the other side. Okay, we're here again. Hopefully, I can just pull the pole out. Brilliant. You did not see that, of course. Okay, so I've just pulled the pole out of the pot because plant is no longer attached to anything in there and I'll deal with that later oh I've got a bunch of bands back, back which is very handy I'll probably give those a wash right now the ideal situation would be to be able to open this pole I've not had much success in the past in doing that but I'm going to try again because, I mean, I don't know. Oh, my God. Look how much work there is to do. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see if I can do that. Actually, maybe I can just move the top bit off. No, I can't. Okay. Oh, I have tried opening opening it before it didn't work. Okay, we're going to do it like this. So I think I'm going to use this paintbrush and just kind of wiggle everything a little loose. it is really very dry I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing I've got a feeling it will it'll be a benefit having I mean generally when the substrates are dry it kind of works within my favour but I don't know it's quite compact it really is wow um, hmm. Yay. Okay. I'm just 
kind of squeezing the pole like this. Let's, oh my gosh. Hopefully this one will come off. Definitely see a lot of roots going on, like here. There's one massive long one there. I wonder if I should spray this pole because the moss is just kind of sticking. Ooh. Okay, I got one out. So that's good. Nice long root. Yeah, I think this might. Okay, so learn from my mistake. I think having the moss moist is actually the way forward. And yeah, it's just nice. So yeah, I'm kind of like, kind of trying to downsize parts of my collection where I've got a lot of the same plant. I mean, I only need one. And you know what, what it's like when you first buy a plant, um, you're not sure how good you're gonna be with that plant. And so it's always nice to have a backup. But since this blended is actually is a fairly easy plant to take care of, definitely feel like I don't need this one. Um, I think whilst that's kind of soaking or whatever, I'm going to pot this one up. I'm actually just going to put it in sphagnum moss. I wonder if I should do a reservoir. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will. Why not? So yeah, I'm just gonna put some lacquer balls at the bottom of the pot to kind of create, just to create a reservoir of water. So if I do overwater it, then it can just collect there at the bottom. And then, this little beauty in here. Oh, hang on, hang on. Here we go. <laughs> it's so bouncy, this root. There. Something like that. did rip some roots. Yeah, my neighbour has been playing music all day today. So that's probably, I don't, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it, but yeah, <laughs> that's what that is. That's what that kind of bassy sound is. Okay, that's good. I think that's pretty comfy. And then the other one, doesn't actually have any roots, but I do just want to kind of clean up. I don't know, there's not much to clean off actually. And like here and there, there's some sheath, so I'm gonna try and get that off. So I mean, at least there's that one root there. So hopefully that will activate. I wonder if this cup is going to be too big. Hang on. Hang on. I do have this one. Reservoir. 
that, nothing too hectic. And I think with this one, I'll definitely be using some great white. Actually, maybe I should cut a little bit of that stem off. Don't need that. So yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine just now and we were talking about what we're going to do this summer, you know, like just kind of, or like now that it's spring, I'm really looking forward to going on some hikes. So, well, I don't know if going to Hampstead Heath is quite the hike, but yeah, we were kind of talking about going to Hampstead Heath. I love hanging out there. Um, I mean, there's just so much space to like walk around, and get some fresh air, get some exercise, do a bit of a picnic and see if anybody else wants to join us. And yeah, like play some cards. I love taking a deck of cards, like if I go to like an outside space or whatever, it's always good fun bit of banter, you know, and want to definitely take advantage of all of the great things that my country has to offer me instead of like flying away somewhere. I mean, obviously if the opportunity arises, it would be nice to go on holiday, but I haven't made any plans this year to go anywhere. I'm still very keen on traveling like within the UK. There's a lot of places that I haven't been to here in the UK. So I want to take advantage of that. And yeah, that's another one. She's a little top heavy, so I might have to stand this in something. What do I have there? Close by, nothing. Classic. Ah, this will do. It's a glass. So I've got two so far, and I think I'll have one more. So that'll be really cool. And I've actually got space in a box for these. Let's put those over there. Yeah, let me know guys have you how do, how are you feeling about travel this year like have you traveled anywhere already maybe and do you plan on traveling to the uk if you're not from here or at least around the uk i'm not sure exactly where i want to start my journey I've, oh, I generally always go down south because it's like warmer, has a slightly warmer climate, but it would be nice to see what's going on up north. My, I have a brother that lives up north. <laughs> up north, he lives in, he lives in Leeds. Is that up north? I mean, that is up north from here, so from London. And I'd love to go and see Scotland and just check that place out. Oh my goodness, this is not going to be easy. Okay, I need to cut this pole open. I have no choice because I literally, I just can't. I mean, if I could just do this half, it would be amazing. I just need to get this part of the plant out. There must be an easier way. Oh, I do. I've got. Oh, I've got a spoon. I'll use this. Let me 
and just spin it round again. Actually, this is probably quite boring just staring at. Let me change the camera view. Okay. Strain it up. Right. This is clearly going to take a little time. And because I really don't want to. Oh no. I broke my paintbrush. Oh. Um, yeah. Let's try this angle. And hopefully you'll get to see a little bit more. So yeah, hopefully this spoon is going to be my best friend. It's kind of working. Kind of. Yeah, this is better. This is a better angle, okay, <laughs> then rather than lying it down. There's a lot of roots in here. Wow, there's so many. so happy because actually the rest of the plant you can just leave like that I think Hang on. let's just keep going maybe now I need something longer not what I wanted. Okay, <laughs> completely messed that up. Look. Ugh. Okay, we've probably got a lot of roots in that other part of the pole. These poles are amazing. I mean, now that I've discovered these D-shaped moss poles, I don't think I'd ever go back to making my own. I did make my own um, before I started this channel. I was really into, well, I wasn't really into it. I made maybe two. I think I did a reel, actually, or a short. I either did it on Instagram or I did it here on YouTube, or I might have done both, um, but I'm sure. No, I think it was Instagram. Yeah, I did a, I did a reel on Instagram um, of making a moss pole, not a T-shaped one, but like a spagged moss, kind of, like using kitchen, not kitchen, chicken, I'm using that kind of chicken wire although I use like a plastic kind of chicken wire. Which, can't, I mean, it works. It's just that they don't stay as moist. Oh my gosh, so many roots. <sighs> yeah, it just doesn't stay as moist. Okay. We 
Are we there yet? Are we? No, we're not. We're not. We've got a brand new leaf being just dragged around right now. It's not good. Okay, I think. Wow, these roots are magnificent. Really long. Yay! Okay, we're there. There. So I have another one. She's now full of sphagnum moss. Just dust that off. So now that I'm thinking, I might do my fuzzy petiole as well because I have um, I have basically three plants. I bought one plant and um, I propagated it several times, and I now have. Let me think. Actually, one. I've got three. Three plants, but in one of the pots, I think I have three plants in there as well, so five. And um, I think one's enough. They're very easy to grow. I don't feel that. I definitely, I feel that I've got the the right lighting for it now. So I don't think I'm going to end up accidentally, you know deleting <laughs> accidentally deleting that one i think i'll be all right i'm gonna use whatever it is that's in here am i no i don't know what that is it's pond but it's quite fine sorry it was lacquer but it was Good. Got loads of sphagnum moss to play with. Yeah, so although I want to downsize, I have actually started purging as well. And I might just do a little short or I might do a video of that stuff. And I'll put it on Instagram if anybody wants it whatever it is that's that's on the steps, currently on the stairs on the way out of my home. If you live in the UK and you're in London in particular, and you're happy to come and pick it up. Um, or we could meet. Yeah. Then I'll, I'm quite happy to give those away. Generally, I offer my things to um, like close friends, obviously first. But I'm sure they're bored of taking my rescues by now. I'm sure, I'm sure they're over it. They're like, we've got a hundred plants already now. Thank you. It's enough. Stop. And I don't think my dad's going to take in any more of my strays. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, it's you guys. Now, I'm going to rely on you guys to rescue some of these plants. Is that long? Oh, that's too long. Let's cut that. There's a growth point here, though, as well. Mm, okay, well, never mind. Never mind. Loads of sphagnum moss. I mean, I can see like kind of some stringy bits, which makes me think maybe they're roots, but hopefully they're not. Hopefully not, but I will go through it and I'll probably, I mean, I'm gonna have a lot of sphagnum moss left over possibly so I will 
I like to, sometimes I like to, even with the sphagnum moss, the plants that run sphagnum moss poles, I like to use hydrogen peroxide. I'm looking around me because I did take it out. Oh, here we go. This stuff, hydrogen peroxide. And I will mix that with some water and just water the, the poles just to kind of get rid of any of uh, those mossy mosquito gnat things or what are they called? Yeah, those kind of natty things. Okay, I think that's good. So I've got three cuttings. Brilliant. These I'm probably going to sell on Facebook, like on one of those plant groups. I joined one called Philodendron UK, I think it is, or I'll put the correct name in the description. So if you are interested, you can have a look at them there. And as you have just seen, they're very rooty. Well, besides the one, which was the one in the smallest cup. So I purposely put it in the smallest cup because it's just pointless giving it too much moisture. That's another one. I'm really happy. She's pretty as well. It's a really nice leaf. I think they're all really good leaves. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to take all the moss out of this. Don't, oh God, there are roots in there. Oh no. So the roots were growing upwards. Not good. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go through all this bag and moss as well. Ouch, cat. Ouch. Brilliant. This pole I busted, I broke it, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. That's on one side now. In here we have roots and I need to dig those out. Now, I don't think this is going to be interesting, guys. So I am going to do this quickly. I'm going to make myself a hot drink. Yeah, I'm going to make myself a hot drink and rifle through this for a little bit. But I will see you back here in about five seconds. But for me, it will probably be about, I don't know, half an hour. I don't know how interesting this this will be. Oh look, look at these roots. They would have been, oh, they would have been lush. So sad. Very, very, very sad. That's another one. But yeah, I mean, this is the great thing about sphagnum moss is that you can renew it. It's just, you know, if you're happy to go through it. Although I would never do this with soil. I just think that would be unbearable. Really. And yeah, you really don't want to have roots, dead roots in your moss pole. It's not going to be good. Hopefully there's not too many. Oh, my poor plant. Okay, I think that's everything. I don't see any more. Oh, hang on. Spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. Is that root? I'm just going to treat that like it is one. I mean, sometimes sphagnum moss does feel like it's got roots in it. But, so I'll just take anything suspicious out. Like that, and it's going to be left with kind of dusty. Yeah, I don't know what that is. If 
who else do I want to chop up for spring? So yeah, so I've got lots of cuttings at the moment. I have Melona Chrysum, they're growing into full plants in a propagation box right now. They're looking pretty good. And I have quite a, I think I've got about five skin dapsus, the Silvian, um, rooted and potted in soil. Yeah, I think they're in soil. Um, the Melona Chrysum are in sphagnum moss. And then I have some Skindapsis exotica also in sphagnum moss. And I've got about nine pots of that. And each pot has about, because you know the leaves are really big. So each pot has about three or four leaves, um, probably I think I put three per, per, per blah, blah, blah. I think I put three three per pot. Um and now they have like they've grown more leaves. So some have four leaves, some have more. And yeah, they're doing really, really well. I mean they're all in propagation boxes, so of course they're having the best of the best climate you know they've got the high humidity and they've also got plant lights above them so they're in optimal conditions but um once i'm ready to sell them i was just basically waiting for spring because you know when you're sending stuff through the mail you want like the best result and I'm posting philodendrons apparently in the when it when the temperatures are cold is not a good idea. They don't seem to fare well. Like they don't seem to travel well. Um, but then again, I don't want it to be too hot. So I think between now and May, yeah, like May, mid May, I need to start posting these plants to to buyers yeah so like that's why I've waited until now I did actually put some of my Hoyas on Instagram because Hoyas they actually travel okay in cooler temperatures or at least that's been my experience Okay, I think, I think I'm happy. I mean, I've just pulled out anything that looks stringy. But I mean, that might just be sphagnum moss, to be honest. Okay, happy with that. Put that in there again. Wow, just got it all over myself. Yes. Oh, um, who else? Who else? Who else? So, yeah, I've got about nine pots of the Exotica, Skindapsis Exotica. I will now have the Splendid. So, I've got three of the Splendid. I think I actually know. I've got three Splendids in my bedroom as well. They are in just normal humidity. They're just in the room in front of the plant light. Because um, my bedroom's quite dark, so they have to. Ha I have to have plant lights in there. Um, but yeah, they are acclim acclimatised, so that's good. Okay, so now I need to just tackle this bit of the plant. And uh, hopefully I can just and, uh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh really, oh my gosh. Don't break any roots. 
I might spray that again. Oh, oh it's just hanging. I hate that. I think a bit more of a spray. Okay. I'm actually going to take a very small break. Lean that like that. Take a very small break, do a little bit of a dust actually because it's a bit nuts. It's a bit crazy in here now. Such sphagnum moss everywhere. I'm gonna make myself a quick drink and I will be right back. And bam, had a little snack and I am raring to go. So, where were we? I did actually go off and wash some lecker balls as well. So yeah, show you. So like the round ones from Soil Ninja. And oh, that's right, I washed a vessel. I actually had another plant in this, but I wanted to put that plant in soil. So yeah, got a pot, so very important. We are set. Okay, I didn't really have a proper look around. I was meant to do that to see if there was anything else that needed doing. I think I kind of went through most of the propagations that I have. Oh, I've got two um, Gloriosum as well. I forgot that one. Uh, wooden spoon, wooden spoon, or long stick, long orchid stick. Let's give this a go. Um, actually, do I only have? No, I've got three. I've got three gloriosum um, growing from wet sticks. All three of them are wet sticks. And they're looking pretty good. So on two of them, they've both got tea leaves, two little baby leaves, they're adorable. I've got to show you them. I'm probably going to do like a springtime, spring slash summer tour, because everything is looking very different this year compared to last year. I must actually re-watch that, that, that video because it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I've definitely accumulated a lot more plants, but it will be interesting to see like how different it looks. I'm sure things look a lot fuller. So in the video before this one, or I don't know how many videos, I think it's one video before this one, I, rearranged this room and I built a new shelving unit and put it in the hallway and um, yeah that shelf is full. I was really hoping I would like have a little more space for new things but that didn't work out. I just found more plants that are like around the apartment. And then I had some of, I had some plants that were kind of hibernating. So I've got two begonias that have never lived outside of the propagation box, especially in the winter because of the heating and everything. Um, Yeah, so they're out, they're out in the hallway right now and I'm just kind of acclimatising them, just keeping an eye on them. If they start to look like they're struggling, then I'll probably put them back in the box, but I really hope not. And um, there are several begonias that I actually really like. I've had begonias in the past. I had like one that was called, I think it was called Iron Cross. And it's quite prickly. It's not like if you're like your average begonia, you know, like those kind of really colourful. It was very um, jungle looking. It was unlike most begonias. Okay, I think we are 
ready to just lie this down a little bit. I'm surprised that leaf is still there. So yeah, we need to have a lot of roots to get out of here somehow. Look how long these roots are. Can you see? They're very long. Yeah, they're hanging all the way down this pole. And I do need to try and squeeze them out of this pole somehow without ripping them. So there's like a little bit of sphagnum moss, like a bulk of it here at the top. So if I can just, I can. Oh, squeeze them out. Somehow, oh my God. Oh, they're coming out. Oh no, did I just break? Okay. Okay. <gasps> that last bit was a bit stressful. Okay, so we've got a pole and we have a beautiful plant. I just need to put it further down to the bottom of the pole. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna put that as low as I can. Hope you can see what's going on. In. Yeah, so I want those roots kind of in the pot. Oh, hang on, no, it needs to come up a bit. I think I've scratched up that new leaf. It's not looking good. And then I'm just going to poke these roots back into some of these holes. Yeah, I, I mean, every now and then I take a look at my collection. And I just think, wow, there's a lot going on. But I just can't get rid of anyone. Like, there's just, I don't know. I'm just so attached to them. It's ridiculous. Right, straps. I need those straps. Where are they? Ah. Fabulous. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll, I'll just concentrate on the duplicates for now. And once I've got that out of the way, Yeah, once I've kind of got that out of the way, then I'll start being more brutal because I mean, I probably do have just a lot of plants that I'm just holding on for the sake of it because I've maybe had them really for a long time or, or maybe someone gave it to me, which is another thing, you know. I mean, it's always lovely getting gifts but, you know, sometimes you outgrow plants or, and just because it's a gift, it makes it kind of more difficult to get rid of. So yeah, I'm gonna squeeze this back into the hole somehow. Which one do I wanna do? Ooh, yeah, I think I'll do this one. I'll try and zoom in. Um, oh yeah, so going back to the begonias, I think if I can't seem to grow them outside of a cabinet, um, outside in normal conditions, I might get a cabinet. Now I know I've said in the past that I wouldn't get cabinet. I didn't want to have plants living inside cabinets but oh my god am I just ripping roots I don't know um but now I'm kind of second thinking like now I'm thinking differently it really depends on what I can actually put in there that will look pretty and like not like but I'm going to end up using it as a humidity box 
although I'm am finding because I've got all the humidity boxes in my bedroom they do look a bit unattractive you know it's not I don't know it's just not that appealing to look at so maybe maybe cabinets are the way forward I was also looking at tents but then that's also going to look quite ugly in my bedroom I want my bedroom to look nice you know like I don't want it to turn into a greenhouse it still needs to be a place of you know kind of comfort and Need one more strap. Relaxation. And I don't want to walk in there and just see like a bunch of work. Lucky like to be. Oh yeah, I've got to still got to repot all of those things. Like I don't want it to be a place where I'm going to be stressing out at all. Okay, it is on the pole. Very, very happy. I don't think I broke too many roots. Don't think so. Oh, I'm really relieved. So that is gonna go. I'm gonna have to shove all of this somehow back up inside the pole. And then I'm gonna put sphagnum moss in, but I wanna put lecker balls at the bottom of the pole. So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure this out somehow wind it up for now and just shove it back in like that yeah my neighbour is I don't know if you can hear my neighbour's music but she's playing reggae it's like such a summertime thing I love playing reggae oh my god I have a lot of um vinyl well not a lot but I have a fair amount of reggae on vinyl and um my record player is yeah it's so old it doesn't work I need to get a new one and I can't wait to start like getting like getting back into playing music again and it's such a shame that actually with these videos that you can't just show your complete self like what I would normally be doing home alone um, or home with friends I would generally have music on and I know that um, a lot of YouTubers add music and I must kind of look into that I mean I think once I can start seeing I'm gonna receive enough payment from YouTube to add those things, those features, then I will definitely be doing that. Because I think it is just a nice little, it's a nice quality to have, like just some music playing in the background. Um, I'm just searching through this moss very quickly to see if there's any roots. Oh, that just plopped right in the bowl. Don't want that. I mean, that's looking okay. Right. I think what I'm going to do to begin with is shove some moss up inside this pole this way. And then, I don't know, was that a good move? Probably not. I don't know if that was a good move or not. Um, if I can get it to be a bit more solid, that'd be great. Right. Yeah, I don't normally do that but because there's so many roots. I definitely don't want to damage them in any way when I'm pushing the moss in from the top. So, next step. I wash the more liquor balls. I do have some here. Nice and dry. So without bumping the top of the plant, I'm just going to get some balls in there and then I'll tip it into this pot. Just pray for me. Ooh. 
hopefully that's Part. Slide it on, and then voila! Easy. Oh, that was nice and easy. Brilliant. Don't think I'm going to need anything more. Let's see. Is that deep enough? Yeah, that's perfect. I'm really happy with that. <sighs> yes. Okay, yeah. So, back to... Who else can I... Oh, my gosh. I do have a lot of double duplicates of um, Hoyas. I'm looking up there because there's two up there. And... Oh, I've got quite a lot of um, Hoya Crimson Queen, but she's kind of still one of my favourites. It's going to be difficult to get rid of. I had some small ones and I sold those. And I've got some more propagating. I wonder if I should take that moss out. Because actually I do want more balls at the bottom. I think I'm going to start again. Hang on. Yeah. The moss has to come out. It's just, it just doesn't work. I'll just have to shove them back up afterwards somehow. I don't know how. Shove this back up again. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to shove the roots back up into the pole. Tip this into here. And then from the top, I'm just going to fill the pole with lecker balls. And that way, I'm going to do it at the same height as the reservoir. Or wouldn't necessarily call it a reservoir actually, but it would be at the same time. Okay, yeah, that works. now actually but it's fine it's fine yeah I've got like a couple of foyers that I probably could yeah I'm really just kind of thinking about space and then um there's some rutsalas that are in this room that actually I want to put into the hallway and then see if they can cope being out there in the winter because last, most years I swap my plants around through the seasons. Um, you'll see that in my, the previous video where I'm preparing for spring and I rearrange basically the plants that prefer to be in the sunnier areas. And I had bought some plants kind of towards the end of the winter concentrating again okay happy 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 and then these loose balls what can I do with those I'll stick them in a cup I've got spike and moss all over them so I'll just wash that off or we'll use that with something else Thank you. 
and I've already got my eye. I mean, I've obviously I've got my wish list, but I recently saw a couple of parts that I really like the look of. And I'm not even sure which um, one of them looks like a fern. Actually, two of them look like, well, one of them is definitely a fern. What am I saying? And the other one looks like a fern, but it could end up being something else. So, so I want to check that out. Um, yeah, I might. you might find me with a new plant. I haven't bought plants. Well, God, that's such a terrible line. I broke my back, my, my plant ban. I started a plant ban last year in, I think it was December. I think it was like November or December. I was like, right, no more buying plants because it's just not realistic going into winter to do that. And I bought my Monstera Albo, like a big one. And that was, yeah, that was very unexpected. I wasn't, I wasn't shopping. I mean, I was in a plant shop, but I wasn't meant to be shopping. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying this. I'm really outing myself. But yeah, I accidentally bought a plant. And then I accidentally bought, did I buy any accidents? Actually, yeah, I did. I accidentally bought um, my orchids, which you would have seen in a short. And I don't know what that is. And I have bought another plant. I bought, I rescued a plant. I bought a rescue plant. I bought a plant that was in the sound section and needed a little TLC. And that's currently in my bedroom. And I will definitely be doing a video on some of my new plants. It's a plant that I actually had in the past and I just decided to give it a go again. So yeah, I kind of do have, actually I do have a couple of secret plants, plants that you guys have not seen. Um, okay, I definitely need more moss. Um, yeah, I do have one or two plants that I haven't really spoken about. And they're generally, like, I've grown from cuttings, like, where I've got something from a swap or a friend has just given me a cutting of their plant. And, yeah, I have those kind of... I'm going to wait until they get to a stage where they're worth looking at. But again, in my tour, you'll just get to see them anyway. I'll do that pretty soon. I want the sun to be shining on that day so that the plants look at their best. Well, not at their best, but you know what I'm like. At their happiest. And I don't know what some of this stuff is in here. Is that... I don't know, maybe I'm just being too pedantic. And then I've got some more over there. Where is that? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I guess that didn't really help, did it? You know, in my whole downsizing, buying more plants obviously does not work when you're trying to downsize. But yeah, I had that plant before in the past. I had a massive, it's a Maranta. I had a massive one. Actually, I shouldn't really tell you about it just yet. Yeah, so I have a couple of like secret plants and I will reveal them very, very soon. Yay, we are getting there. Got another bowl here. Just have to go through this very quickly. And I do have I think I've got two areas where I can hang plants. So there's two, and I was thinking I might put a shelf in the hallway as well so I could hang like most of my Ripsalis out there because I do feel that they would appreciate the cooler temperatures, um, especially like in the winter. 
because this room I like to keep nice and warm obviously because it's the living room and my bedroom the same but the hallway doesn't have any heating and it generally can get quite cold out there the linearis my hoya linearis um definitely would have bloomed more had it have got to to cooler temperatures so that might go out in the hallway as well so yeah okay that's good so just a bit of a spray Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, we need to go right to the top of this pole. In fact, I might need to put an extension lead on. Extension leads. I might need to put an extension on the pole already. And I forgot to cover the top of where the liquor balls are, and now there's sphagnum moss all in the top. Okay, it's full. And then these suspicious bits. I'm not sure if that's roots in that. So I'll check that out later. Yeah, there's loads of sphagnum moss on the top. I mean, that's going to happen anyway, unfortunately. No, no, no. This in as well. And I will need to extend this pretty soon. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting Hoover out now. But happy. And I think I bashed that leaf a bit. Right, quick dust and we are done. And I do need to water the pole as well. But I might just take this through to the shower because that way I can just wash the leaves as well. Maybe that's a better idea than doing that. <laughs> okay. Everywhere. So that's that one. I'm really very happy with that. Yeah, that leaf did get a bit of a bash. So I've got three cuttings here. So that's good news put a pole in and I think I'm going to clip this one up because it keeps wobbling forward. So yeah, I've just got these kind of clips from, I think you'd normally use this with an orchid. How do they work though? That. Ooh. Oh no. No, no, no. Go on, in you go. Voila. And give that a quick water. And I do have great white mixed up in this water. So which is the one without the roots? Because that's the most important one. Here we go. This one really needs it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll get some roots on this one because the leaf is so cute. So nice. And let me pop you there. And there's this one, which I just pinned up. The leaf isn't looking, I mean, yeah, it's not looking amazing, but we do have a growth point in the pot. I don't know if you can see that, but there is one. So that's good. And that one has a very healthy root system. This one has a massive root system also. 
probably shouldn't use great white on this one really, but it's right next to me. Do that instead. Yeah, you can see the roots are, oh, there's a lot of roots in there. And let's have a look at your leaf. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. And I do, in the pot, still have another leaf. So, this is the pot. I'm going to cut this. Um, do I see an active... Ah, we do. We don't have any roots on it. But I think I'm not that invested in that leaf anyway, so check it tears. I'm just going to cut it and just see what happens. Just hope for the best. Yeah, I don't know actually. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to cut it. And then I'm just going to throw this away. Yeah, that works. So we'll just... I'll just keep you updated and see if this one gets any roots this way. But that was a very, very productive day. I'm very happy with that. Well, I'm going to sneeze. Woo! Yeah, there's a lot of dusty sphagnum moss floating around in the air. So I'm going to go and grab the hoover. Thanks so much for hanging out. I hope that um you got some work done as well i'm gonna put one more strap on yeah i hope you got some work done as well and let me know actually what you got up to whilst i was doing this <laughs> it'd be interesting to know i spoke to um one of you guys recently and you were saying that oh you, you get so much work done at the same time With your own plants so yeah i think that's probably what a lot of you are doing i know that that's what i do when i watch um plant videos we have come to the end and i am going to let you guys go thank you so much for hanging out i hope that you enjoyed the video do give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done already i would greatly appreciate that still growing this little family We'd love to get more and more of you beautiful people to join this community. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'll see you again very soon. Until then, bye.